and welcome back to your free consult. Now a lot of you have sent me this question and I just thought I'd finally address it and many of you want to know what is the best kind of delivery? Should you go for a vaginal delivery or should you go for a cesarean section? And so today I'm here to answer that and we're going to start off by talking about vaginal delivery and the way I like to see it is we need to just list the benefits and the risks of each kind of delivery because I am not really hard and fast on you must have a vaginal delivery or you must have a cesarean delivery. I just like to let you know about the benefits and risks of it and then let you decide. So when we talk about vaginal delivery, what are the benefits? The benefits are that it is safe, you get to bond with your baby fairly quickly because you know it'll be um it can be it can take long but you will bond with your baby fairly quickly and you can initiate breastfeeding very fast. You don't end up with an abdominal wound and so you don't run the risk of a wound infection. There's quick recovery from the delivery. Most women are able to walk even hours after delivery, especially if it was not a complicated one. There's a shorter hospital stay, which is always a good thing because you don't get to contract new infections and also you get to save your money. And last but not least, there's a lessened risk of your baby developing respiratory distress syndrome because the uterus contracts against the lungs of the baby and lets the baby practice how to breathe when they're finally out. And so so I think those are a number of good benefits to have a vaginal delivery. Now let's quickly head on to what are the risks of a vaginal delivery. And the first one is the one that I really hate the most and that's vaginal laxity. So when you have a vaginal delivery, you are at risk of developing vaginal laxity or looseness of the vagina, which comes with its own um, sexual and psychological problems. Another is vaginal tears and perineal tears. So when you have a vaginal delivery, you are at risk of developing vaginal and perineal tears. And these are graded in different grades between one and four and some are easy to repair some uh, can heal on their own but some require an a surgery or an operative repair and that can be a disadvantage of having a vaginal delivery vaginal deliveries also come with other risks especially like to the baby um, for example there is the risk of having a shoulder distortion which is where the shoulder of the baby gets stuck against the mother's pelvis and this can be really dangerous for the baby luckily um, most good hospitals know how to deal with it and they can save both the baby's and the mother's life however it is a risk um, another risk of having a vaginal delivery is that the cord of the baby can prolapse through the vagina and this is actually an option obstetric emergency because when the cord prolapses the supply the blood supply to the baby can be compromised and this can be fatal for the baby another disadvantage can be rupture of the uterus there are some women whose uterus contracts so strongly or some women who are on medication to help their uterus contract more strongly like oxytocin and this can eventually lead to rupture of the uterus this is actually very rare but it can happen Another disadvantage is transmission of infections between the mother and the baby. So for example, if the mother has viral infections like HIV or herpes, then when the mother delivers vaginally, these can be transmitted to the baby, which is one of the reasons why we do caesareans, so that we can prevent that mother to baby transmission. Another disadvantage is developing a fistula. Now I know some of you have heard of fistulas. You can either have um, a vesicovaginal fistula, which is where there's a communication that's developed between the bladder and the vagina and such that urine starts to leak through the vagina. This generally happens to women who have been in obstructive labor meaning the baby is too big or the mother's pelvis is too small and the woman has been in vaginal uh, is hoping for a vaginal delivery and has been in labor for a very long time however it can happen from other kinds of labors as well and so a fistula is one of the adverse um, effects that can result from a vaginal delivery um, another uh, adverse effect or risk is that you can develop urinary incontinence which is where after a vaginal delivery you're not able to contain your urine on your own and so a lot of it tends to leak out and this can be an effect of a vaginal delivery we also have another effect called pelvic organ prolapse which is where after a vaginal delivery because of all the strain and stretching the uterus tends to start dropping towards the vagina or into the vagina so it, it can start off 
very mildly and then it can go quite severely especially after very many very difficult vaginal deliveries but this is one of the problems that can occur and it causes a lot of issues with urination a lot of issues with sexual intercourse and occasionally even with passing of stone and finally one of the other risks is the placenta remaining behind inside the uterus which is called a retained placenta so when you have a vaginal delivery and you have a retained placenta you may need to either have it manually removed or you may end up having to go to theater to have it removed and that's another risk of having a vaginal delivery during a cesarean section the placenta will be removed by the obstetrician who will just you know peel it off the uterus so those are the risks of vaginal delivery now let's quickly talk about caesarean sections and what are the benefits of caesarean section versus its risks. Now let's talk about some of the reasons why a woman would have a caesarean section and what are the risks of having caesarean sections. So why a woman would have a caesarean section first, maybe uh, her baby is in a breech position, which means that the baby comes buttocks and legs down first instead of head down first, which is the preferred position for a vaginal deliveries. With delivery so when this happens then she probably require a cesarean section unless she's way into labor and now nothing can really be done into it and she's just about to deliver where we can conduct a breech delivery another reason is when a woman is in labor and she has her baby in distress so the baby will show distress by passing stool and then it will be noticed in the amniotic fluid that there's actually stool of the baby in the amniotic fluid and so that's a sign of distress for the baby and that's another reason why one would have a cesarean section uh, one other reason to have a cesarean section is when the labor cannot progress and this is the most common reason for a cesarean section a woman goes into labor and the labor is just not able to progress normally um, either the cervix isn't dilating too fast or the contractions of the woman are not good enough and so that's a reason for a cesarean section another reason would be that the baby is just too big to have a normal vaginal delivery so babies that are over four kilos um, in the last week of pregnancy most of the time may end up um, having to be delivered through a cesarean section another reason to have a cesarean section is if there is a previous cesarean section that was done or two previous or three previous or more previous cesarean sections that were done most of the time it's very likely that a woman is going to have another cesarean section we do have an option of having a vaginal delivery after one cesarean section but anything more than one cesarean section is probably going to require a repeat cesarean section Another reason to have a caesarean section is if the placenta has an abnormality, for example, in a condition called placenta previa. This is where the placenta covers the cervix and therefore the baby would probably not be able to come out vaginally anyway. And so that's another reason to have a caesarean section. We would also do a caesarean section if we want to trans if we want to prevent a transmission of a disease from the mother to the baby for example hiv or any other viral infection that would be a reason to do a caesarean section so that there's no transmission or reduced transmission between the mother and the baby and last but not least and this is one of my favorite reasons to have a caesarean is because the mother just chooses to have a caesarean section because it is actually the patient's choice at the end of the day. We cannot force anyone to have either a vaginal or a caesarean delivery. So now let's head on to what are the risks or disadvantages of having a caesarean delivery. One of the risks is that you're gonna stay in hospital for longer. So unlike a vaginal delivery where a woman will probably stay for 24 hours, a caesarean section delivery is probably going to keep you in hospital for about three days. And of course this adds up to cost. At the same time, there is increased risk of infection in the caesarean, sec caesarean section incision site. And so nobody wants an infection, but that is a risk as opposed to having a vaginal delivery. You may have an uh, infection with a vaginal delivery. Um, it's called pupil uh, infection or pupil sepsis. However, with caesarean section, that risk is increased. Another disadvantage is that you have occasional late initiation of breastfeeding. So we want the baby to start breastfeeding as soon as possible. And sometimes after cesarean section, there's drowsiness or maybe a complication occurred and the woman is not able to start breastfeeding her baby immediately, which does have its own consequences. Another adverse effect is that these 
lengthened recovery after cesarean section. A woman who's had a vaginal delivery has a very quick recovery, but with cesarean section recovery can be quite delayed. There is also increased need for a subsequent cesarean section once a woman has had a cesarean section. So she's likely to have a second, third, fourth, or even more cesarean sections after she's had a cesarean section for the very first time. And cesarean sections also come with their own complications in the subsequent pregnancy. And so that's another risk for having a cesarean section. One of those subsequent complications is something called placenta previa or placenta creta. So the placenta has an affinity for the previous incision site. And so the placenta wants to go and attach at the previous incision. And that's not always a good thing because it can end up attaching very close to the cervix. And this could make a woman bleed throughout pregnancy or in one or two of her trimesters. And last but not least, there is an increased risk of respiratory distress syndrome in the baby. Because remember what we mentioned, during labor, the uterus contracts and it presses against the baby's lungs and the baby gets to practice on how they're going to breathe, breathe once they are delivered. But with cesarean section, the baby is in and the baby is out and they don't get that practice. And so there's an increased risk of respiratory distress syndrome. I hope all this information has been very useful to you to help you decide as to whether you want a vaginal or cesarean delivery. Remember to keep your mind open. You may want to have a vaginal delivery that ends up in a cesarean delivery and vice versa. And please Please just listen to all the information, take it in, keep an open mind, know the benefits and the risks of each delivery and discuss it with your OBGYN. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Your Free Consult and I can't wait to see you next week.